about Biota, that is the digitization software that we're going to demonstrate here, uh, you can find it uh, at the URL that is uh, on the on this slide, uh, right above the the picture. So we chose Biota because it's a really simple software. It's really easy to to find, to install, and to use. But it's really not the only one. So it's just uh, to give you an idea of uh, how a digitization software works. But uh, as I said before, you can have a look at the list uh, that we put um, at the beginning of this presentation and um, try the different softwares that are uh, listed here and uh, find for yourself uh, which one is going to be the more most useful for you. So uh, if you don't like Biota or if it doesn't seem interesting for you, uh, you can uh, have a look at other softwares and uh, see what is best for you and your team and your work. So uh, I'm going to uh, present you Biota uh, that you can find uh, at this uh, address. And you can also download it uh, on this page. So this is uh, at the top of the slide. You can see an uh, URL where you can uh, download the, the, the software. So this slide uh, is going to, uh, to list a few uh, recommendations for the setup and for uh, reading the user guide. So Biota is really simple to download. You, you just have to download a, a zip file and then you can unzip it uh, once uh, the download is finished. Then you can extract the contents to your computer. And you just have to click the Biota app win uh, 300.exe file. And normally, Biota launches uh, automatically. Uh, just a note, if an error message appears, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, you don't have to worry. You just have to check the regional settings of your computer. Because uh, in order for this software to work, uh, to work normally, the date format on your computer must be day day slash month month slash uh, year with uh, four numbers and if you want more information about how to use this software you can find the user guide at the url that is uh, on the bottom of this slide so once you've launched biota you arrive on the main page of the software that looks like this so you can see uh, that uh, this software uh, has a lot of functionalities. Uh, we are not going to go into detail for each of them, but I will just show you the main ones about uh, uh, record input. And uh, you will have uh, an idea of uh, the, what this uh, software is cap capable of. So the first... Um, Sorry, the first uh, thing that you can do on this software is to uh, input uh, some uh, specimens in the software. So you just have to click on the, on the red uh, box uh, and you arrive on this page. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pop-up window that appears once you, you click on the input specimen uh, box. And uh, on this new window, you will see a lot of new information <coughs> where you can uh, f fill in a lot of different fields. So if you want to, uh, to input a specimen, you will need a specimen number or specimen code uh, that can be most of the time the catalog number. So you just have to click on the specimen code here. And this uh, new pop-up window will appear. <clears throat> and you will be able to, to enter uh, the prefix that you want. So if your institution uh, acronym is uh, MNHN, for example, you can put it here and click on Accept Prefix. And then all of your specimen uh, codes are going to be uh, written like this with the, this acronym in front of the code. Or if you want, you can choose the default prefix that is uh, written here. And all of your specimen code 
uh, will afterward will be uh, written with this default prefix. But I recommend you to use the prefix the prefix you use in your institution. So once you have uh, chosen a prefix, um, the specimen code can look like this. So this is the first specimen from the MNHN institution. Then you might want to add a species code to your specimen. So <clears throat> in order to link it to a, to a species, to a taxa. So when you click on the speci species code box here, you can see uh, on, in the center of the window, you will have a new uh, pop-up window that will appear. And it's the same thing as uh, as for the specimen code. You just have to sorry, you just have to enter the prefix here or to uh, choose the default prefix and click on accept. And once you do that, you can add more information about the the species, such as the genus the specific epithet, the uh, authorship and date of the description of the species, uh, maybe if you have the information, the subgenus, and other information about the, the tax taxon you just entered. Then if you go back in the main uh, window for specimen input, uh, you will see that you have a lot of tabs so we, we were still in a general tab, and now we are going to the determination tab. So you can retrieve here the specimen code that you just entered. And uh, here you can um, specify the determination history for your specimen. So if you have uh, several labels, for example, or, or if you know that your specimen was identified by um, different people uh, on different years, you can uh, you can add the historical data here for this specimen. If you go then on the preparation tab here, you will still retrieve the specimen code uh, MNHN00001 that we uh, filled in in the general tab. So this is to be sure that you are, we are still speaking about the the same specimen and. In the preparation tab, we can add some information about the people who prepare, prepared the specimen and the, the medium of preparation. Then you have the, <clears throat> the tab auxiliary fields, where you can add uh, some more information about your specimen. Then the next tab is notes. So if you have some notes, some field notes, some collection notes about your specimen, you can uh, add them here. So you can say, for example, that this specimen is linked to another specimen, or that you have some DNA samples for this specimen, or that this specimen was uh, broken and then uh, put back together uh, in, uh, in year <coughs> 2000, for example. So you can uh, add uh, really uh, a lot of information here and of course uh, think of uh, saving the, the notes and everything. And the last tab in this window is a uh, reference. So if you have some ref um, some sorry some literature references that are linked to this specimen, you can add them here. So you can add the uh, identifier for the reference, the author, the year, and the title of the article. So this can be a publication, a book, uh, uh, I don't know, any uh, any reference that are linked to uh, one or several specimens in your collection. So once we have uh, seen uh, how we can uh, input some specimens directly into the software, we will uh, have a look at how to uh, to input some collection. So this is uh, the red box here in the center of the of the window. So when we when you click here, you will have this new pop-up window that will appear where, where you can uh, fill in a lot of information about the collection. So this is not about the specimen, this is uh, on a higher level uh, about the collection. 
<clears throat> so if you don't have uh, if you don't have any collection that are uh, already uh, registered into the software, you will have to specify the collection code and then other information about the collection. So you can add uh, localities, um, georeference your 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 collection, and uh, you will also retrieve some auxiliary fields. Uh, notes and references. So we are going to start with the collection code. I went directly into the dual reference uh, tab, which is inter uh, interesting for most of the collections. So you can uh, here you you can uh, find the the collection code that was specified in the general tab, and you can add here some uh, dual references. So you have the uh, sorry the latitudes and longitude uh, here. And you can also uh, add the accuracy of your coordinates in this field. So you might want to, um, to add some localities in your database because it's uh, easier when you uh, do a lot of field work in, uh, in the same locality to, to do so you, you, you can uh, add some localities so you don't have to uh, to type the name of the locality each time you you need it. So when you click on the input locality uh, box, you access this window where you can add a locality co code, sorry, the locality name, of course, the district, the state or province, the country. If you have the information, you can add the elevation. You can also convert uh, feet to meter. And you can see that you will you have the same tabs that uh, for the input collection uh, window with the georeference, auxiliary fields, notes, and references. And if you want to uh, to add some references about your collection of specimens, you can also uh, add them at this uh, when clicking when clicking on this uh, box that is uh, in red here. So you can choose the type of reference. Is it a, an article that was published in a journal? Is it uh, an other type of reference, uh, a book, an atlas, or anything else? You can add the author, the uh, the author or the authors of the of the reference you want to add. You can put the year uh, the reference was published, its title the journal it was published in, the volume, the pages. Uh, maybe you can have the URL for your reference if, uh, if it was published online. And here you can put the full reference uh, for citation purposes. And uh, another uh, useful functionality uh, of this software is the ability to add some personnel. So if you uh, have a lot of people that work on the same project, or even if you don't have a lot of people, but you just just don't want to retype uh, information about them every time you uh, you add a specimen or a collection, you can input uh, click on input personnel, and then you will be able to retrieve the the names of the people of your institution or organization uh, involved in the management of data. So when you click on the on the red box uh, that says uh, input personnel you have this uh, pop-up window that appears where you can add uh, the name of the project or of the group of people, and then you will be able to fill in the information for the specifically for each uh, people, each person involved with the first and last names, title, institution, address, city, country, voice, uh, sorry, phone, uh, and uh, email. So this was uh, a really quick presentation uh, of a digitizing software. As I was saying at the beginning of this presentation, Biota is not the only software that is available. So you really have to uh, check that it's uh, compatible with your needs. So if you uh, want to uh, have a look at other softwares or other tools, uh, for the management of your collection of all your data, it's uh, you really you 
we strongly uh, encourage you to, to do that. So uh, don't hesitate to ask questions to the BID community, to the mentors, to the trainers, to your, your fellow participants uh, in your groups or uh, in uh, other groups. Uh, and because most of the time uh, people will already already know and use uh, softwares so they can uh, answer your questions and recommend you some softwares that you might have missed or did not know about. So this is it for this presentation. Um, and thank you for listening. And this is the end of the digitization module.